Learn of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In preparation to celebrate the real presence of Jesus Christ in this Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. My dear brothers, you must keep clear of idolatry. I say to you as sensible people, judge for yourselves what I am saying. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. Look at the other Israel, the race, where those who eat the sacrifices are in communion with the altar. Does this mean that the food sacrificed to idols has a real value or that the idol itself is real? Not at all. It simply means that the sacrifices that they offer, they sacrifice to demons who are not God. I have no desire to see you in communion with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot take your share at the table of the Lord and at the table of demons. Do we want to make the Lord angry? Are we stronger than he is? The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm and the response is, a thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill. 
before all his people, a thanksgiving sacrifice I make to you, O Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There is no sound a tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness, in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and acts on them, I will show you what he's like. He's like the man who when he built his house, dug and dug deep and laid a foundation on rock. When the river was in flood, it bore down on that house, but could not shake it. It was, it was so well built. But the one who listens and does nothing is like the man who built his house on soil with no foundations. As soon as the river bore down on it, it collapsed, and what a ruin that house became the good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So writing to the Corinthian church, Paul says, the blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. Beloved in Christ, let us reflect briefly on the words communion and contact. Communion is to be one with, is to have a common union with someone. Communion means to share a union. So in a sense or in a word, a union shapes the way you think, it shapes the behavior of persons. So there's this kind of ebb and flow in which in that union, you are shaped and formed in that union. On the other hand, contact is to, is to relate at a distance, is to encounter someone or something on the surface little or no influence happens in contact. It is in communion that impact occurs. Perhaps we can use the, the metaphor of food preparation um, to distinguish between communion and contact. So when you go to the supermarket or you go to the market or you go into your refrigerator and you take the food out of the refrigerator or you purchase from the market or the supermarket, in one sense, that is contact. There's no real communion with the food or with the persons. Communion takes place in the actual preparation 
Because in preparing a meal, what happens is that there is a, there is a union, so, so to speak, between you and the food. So if you spend time marinating the meat and if you spend time cooking in the kitchen, by the time you finish cooking, you smell like the food, don't you? <laughs> Your entire kitchen smells like the food your clothing, your hair, everything. So in, in a sense, there's this, there's this communion, there's a sharing, there's this intimacy between you and the, the meal and the food to the extent that when you serve that food, people will say to you, it's been served with love because there's communion. Beloved in Christ, Paul addresses a very sensitive and a controversial pastoral and social issue in this very diverse Corinthian port city. What is the context? You see, beloved in Christ, Corinth at that time was a predominantly pagan city. And there were pagans who have been converted to Christianity. But while they were converted to Christianity and they belonged to the Christian community, they were still participating in pagan religious activities, one of which is offering meat to the idols. So in the ancient world, meat was only available for sale or for purchase only after a religious festival, only after being offered to the gods, when the priests offered to the gods and then they will make the food available for purchase. The arguments of those pagans who became Christians is that, listen, there is no problem. We have no problem continuing to participate in this banquet, in this festival of offering the food to the gods because our intention is not idol worship. Our intention is not to do what we used to do. And what is Paul's response? Paul argues that, yes, you are right that, yes, your intention is not idol worship. But Paul goes on to say that, yes, while your intention is not the same as the pagans, the social gesture of participating in this banquet, in this festival, is independent of their, of their intention. In other words, by participating in the temple banquets, they enter into communion with the intentions of the pagans. And the intentions of the pagans is anti-God, which Paul calls demons. So while your intention is not the same as theirs, by virtue of participating in this festival, you are entering into communion with their intention and therefore are propagating their, their intention. And what is their intention? Their intention really is destruction of the Christian community and Christian values because it was the pagans who were persecuting the Christians. Let me give you an example. So if I, I, belong to, I belong to a gym. I'm a member of a gym that has an international franchise. Now, during the time of the, the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States of America after the, the death of George Floyd, um, this particular franchise was very silent on the matter. And quite a number of members or franchise groups throughout the world wrote to the CEO to express concern that this particular franchise was saying nothing. And in response, the CEO of the, of the franchise lamblasted those who wrote these letters. Well, the franchise here in Trinidad and Tobago decided that they were going to break ranks with that international franchise. As, with, as a number of sports, uh, sports groups as well, Nike, etc., broke ranks. Why? They broke ranks because while their intention, while the intention of the local group was not the same as that of the, the headquarters, by being a member of the franchise, the, the directors argue that they are in cohorts with their intention, and so they break ranks. 
Beloved in Christ, what is Paul teaching us today? Paul's teaching is that yes, the Eucharist is a communion. It's a shared union, a common union with the sacrifice and blood of Christ. Not only that, but when you and I participate in the communion in this Eucharist, we participate in Christ's intentions. And therefore, we should not be in communion with groups or with ideologies or with persons that have different intentions from that of the Christians. So what is the missionary challenge? The missionary challenge, beloved in Christ, for all of us as we listen intently to Paul's readings is that you and I have to identify any activity in our lives, any groups that we belong to, that while you have good intentions, but by virtue of participating in this group, you are supporting their intention. And oftentimes their intention is anti-gospel, anti-Jesus Christ, anti-God. And so Paul says, you, he says to the community, you have to make a choice. You can't be in communion with the blood of Christ and at the same time in communion with a group of persons or in relationships that are anti-God. In doing so, you are offering to the demons. And so the challenge that the Christian community of Corinth faced is also the challenge that the parish church and the domestic church faces. How do we form parishioners? How do we form our children to be in the world, but not of the world? It's a challenge. The answer is not simple, and it's not straightforward. It's not a black and white issue. It's a very difficult process of discernment. But what Paul is saying is that if you are faithful to the communion, if you are faithful to the Eucharist, if you are faithful to be in union with Christ in the Eucharist, then it's a good possibility that you will be able to discern the groups, the relationships that you must belong to or you must not belong to. For the blessing cup that we bless is what? Is a communion. So let us take on this challenge today. Let us ask ourselves, are we participating in any social activity? Are we participating in any group that while our intentions may be pure, may be Christian, maybe of gospel values, but their intention is different. And so by virtue of being part of that group or part of that social activity, you may be, you are supporting their intentions. And so you and I, as Paul is challenging the, Christ, the Corinthian community, we have to make a decision. We can't offer communion, we can't offer sacrifice to the idols, to the demons, and to God make your choice. I pray that today you will make your choice to be in communion with the blood of Christ. Amen. And so let us stand, beloved, in Christ as we, we offer our petitions. We pray for our Holy Father Francis. We pray for courage and strength, wisdom and understanding as he faithfully pastor the universal church and as he faithfully becomes a witness of his own communion with the blood of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, give courage and give strength to our, our leaders, our pastoral leaders, particularly our bishops and the bishops of the, of the Caribbean, the bishops of the Andalus Episcopal Conference, that God may give them through the power of the Holy Spirit a similar clarity as he did with Paul, in particular in addressing uh, local issues and, and social issues and community issues. Give them that clarity 
and give them that strength and that courage to be bold in their teachings. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray in particular for those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. We pray for the gift of matrimony. And we pray today in particular for Brian and Kathy Lewis as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. And also for George and Barbara Bain celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary in a particular way bless them lord and bless their family renew their commitment to you and to each other that they may continue to remain faithful to their marital commitment lord hear us lord graciously hear us and we pray for those who have joined us through the media those who have listened attentively to the word of god we pray that this word may continue to transform their minds transform their hearts so that they may remain in communion with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pause briefly that you may offer your own intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Good and gracious God, you have listened attentively to these, our petitions offered to you in this Eucharist. I truly grant them to us, for we ask of them in faith and in confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to you, Lord, bearing gifts of bread and wine, recalling how, Lord, Give your gift of love divine before your table. Right now we stand. Oh, please, Lord, accept these presents from our hands. Take these all gifts, Lord, sanctify them. Them thine. Pronounce the words, Lord, that make your flesh and blood of bread and wine. Then to our Father, who reigns high above, show these all gifts, Lord. Tell him of our Your love for all mankind that made the earth yield this bread and wine. You who shed our humanity, give us this life giving mystery so that through him we may share in your divinity. My sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for although you have no need of our praise yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift since your praises add nothing to your greatness but only profit us for salvation through christ our lord and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim holy holy holy, holy lord god of hosts Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
brothers and sisters, at this time, those right here in the chapel will receive Jesus sacramentally in Holy Communion. You're invited to join us and make your own spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I now cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you, Lord, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, O Divine Savior, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament. And our life has just begun In the spirit we are young We can live forever Sons of God, hear his holy word Gather round the table of the Lord Eat his body, drink his blood And we'll sing a song of love Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout together to the Lord who has promised a reward. Happiness a hundredfold and we live forever. Sons of God, hear his holy word. Gather round the table of the Lord Eat his body, drink his blood And we'll sing a song of love Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> And so many of us, many of our members of our communion have not been able to celebrate in person, physically, the, the Eucharist. But each day they have joined us through the media, joined us in spiritual communion, still in communion with the church in celebrating the Eucharist. And so we pray that those particularly have joined us in, through the media who have been, who have heard the word of God, may truly allow that word to transform them and to enable them to discern, to discern the relationships, the groups that they belong to, and to discern whether they should be part of this group. If this group particularly does not share your own intention or the Christian intention, the gospel intention, We pray that they may also have a desire, yearning for the celebration of the Eucharist. So we pray in a special way for the wider church as she goes through this pandemic. That the Lord may keep us in communion, in communion with the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Where does nonviolence begin? Nonviolence begins within each of us, within you, within me. And so this evening, we ask you to, to join Trinity TV uh, and on Facebook tonight at 9 p.m. as we discuss the theme, Mandemic, a program for men, helping men to truly deal with the challenges of the COVID period. So join, view Trinity TV and Facebook tonight at 9 p.m. for Mandemic, a program for men coping in COVID times. The Lord be with you. 
Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration ends. Go and announce the good news by your lives. Thanks be to God. Stand together for what you be. Work for what must be done. Love each other in all that you do. Tell all my people the one. Spread the peace, my brother. Spread it everywhere. Make the world know right from wrong. Help the world to care. Stand together for what you Work for what must be done. Love each other in all that you do. Till all my people are one. Cry out the sound of freedom. Make every sound be.